Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial in which we're going to carry on looking at export. Now I've got a composition that I'm ready to export. It's uh, just a little bouncing text animation and I'm happy to export that and I don't really want to export it through After Effects because I want to get on and work on another project. And if I export through After Effects it's going to slow me down and I'm ready to export this with an alpha channel. So as you can see it's got transparency behind it. I do want that alpha channel and I want to make this my final output. So what I can do is I can minimize or even close After Effects if I wanted to and open up Adobe Media Encoder and this is the way it opens up. Now we're going to do a few tutorials on Adobe Media Encoder but this is the basic way of using it. Firstly let's have a look over here at this preset browser. Adobe Media Encoder has been specifically set up to make everything quick and easy for you. We've got an awful lot of bits and pieces. I'm just going to maximize that with the tilde key, which is the same key that we use for After Effects. Maximizes the window so we can see all the bits and pieces that are here. And you'll see that you can start off with audio only formats. AIFF is a Mac one, WAV is the one I tend to use on my Windows machine. You've got broadcast outputs. I'm not going to go through all of these merely just to say that they're here and you can use them. Camera outputs. An important one nowadays is device outputs. And if I open up devices, I've got Android, Apple, Microsoft, mobile, tablets, and goodness knows what. So if I open up tablets, you can see I've got phone and tablet standard settings. But if I open up Apple, I've also got iPad 2, for instance. Now, iPad 3 and iPad 4 have come out recently. So we could actually go in and change these. And I'm going to show you in another tutorial how we can modify these settings and create our own groups. But at the moment, we can select any one of these and use them. Now, one thing to say is simply this. Notice that you've got different frame rates, 23.976, 25, and 29.97. 23.976 is actually a film format. Generally speaking, film is filmed or documentaries are sometimes filmed in 24 frames per second. 23.976. If you're in the US or Japan, you probably work in NTSC, so therefore you're going to be looking for this 29.97 setting. And then if you're working on PAL or CCAM, anywhere else in the world, pretty much Europe and the rest of the world, then you're looking for 25 frames per second. So we've got the Apple settings or the devices settings, DVD and Blu ray exports. There's not a great deal of options in those. Obviously, you've got the Blu ray outputs and the DVD outputs. And then we've got image sequences, which I'm going to use a bit later on, and then web video, which is very common. Now look, we've got YouTube settings, and we've even got Vimeo settings. Vimeo is another video sharing site. My experience, however, is if you put a video up on YouTube, it'll play on any device. So you can play it on an Apple phone, or you can play it on an Android phone, and it will play. Whereas I have found that Vimeo is less reliable, particularly on Android phones. But it's up to you or up to your client where it needs to go. You just need to be able to output it in the appropriate format. And it's dead simple to do that. I'm going to hit the tilde key to minimize that panel again. What we need to do is bring in the After Effects composition. So we can go to File, Add After Effects Composition. It's that simple. Or alternatively, you can click the little plus button here and it says, OK, where is it? So I'm going to go to my desktop. And I'm going to find an After Effects project, expression example here, and then click Open. And it's going to open up this Import After Effects Composition dialog box. And it's actually opened up, or it's saying it's connected to Dynamic Link Server. And it's looking for the compositions inside that project. And it's come up and said there's one expression example. Here it is. I'm just going to cancel and show you how it works if I do it through the File menu. So at this point you would click Expression and OK, but I'm just going to click Cancel and do the same thing but through the File menu this time, rather than clicking the plus button, go File, Add After Effects Composition, and then I go and find it, here it is Expression Example, and then click on that and it does exactly the same thing. The only difference is I've actually got a, a, an easy way of navigating to my projects, a navigator. And there we go, exactly the same thing. Here it is, expression example, and I would add it that way. So you can do it one of two ways. This way allows you to navigate inside Media Encoder. The other one would navigate through your standard navigation tools. Then you click OK, and it brings it in with a default setting, which probably isn't what you want to use. Now, unless you're going to get very advanced in Media Encoder, you don't really want to go fooling around with these sections over here. 
You can go here and choose where it's going to go out to, but I would do that after you've selected what type of format you want to output it as. So this is my actual item, and I can add in any of the settings that are here. If I want to overwrite this one, I don't want to output a PNG sequence, this isn't what I want to use, but I do want a YouTube HD 25 frames per second, I can click and drag and hover over the top and you can get that little icon that's saying I'm going to replace what's already there. And when I let go, it's replaced it. So you can see it's an H.264 and it's got the preset setting here. And we can see where it's going to go out to. So it's going to go to my desktop and it's going to come out as an MPEG4 MP4 file. Now say I want to add something else. Say I also want to output a Vimeo version. I can open up Vimeo and I can do say a 72025. Click and drag, but this time drop it below. Don't drop it on top because that will replace it. But if I drop it below, it adds it to it. So it's going to output two separate versions. And if I wish, I can go up and I can close web videos altogether and say go up to devices. Open up devices and say I want to output it to uh, an Apple, let's say iPad 225. So I can take that one and drag it and drop it underneath. And let's also say that I want to output an image sequence. In actual fact, for what I've just done, if we look at the project again, I really do want an image sequence that's going to support an alpha channel. So either a file format or an image sequence that's going to support an alpha channel so I can put this or composite it on top of something else in my next item that I use it in, say Premiere Pro or whatever. So I'm going to go to an image sequence and I'm going to go down to, say, a ping sequence and I'm going to go to 25 and I'm not 100% sure whether this is going to support alpha or not that's when I can right click on it and go to preset settings and now I can look and see if this is actually going to support an alpha channel look include alpha channel so I know that this will include an alpha channel so I can just cancel that I know that it's including an alpha channel so I can drag that in and drop it underneath now Everything's ready to go, however I do have one particular problem. I am exporting an image sequence. And sequences produce lots of images. So it's 25 images per second for a PAL, 30 for an NTSC, and I've got, I think it's 10 seconds long, so it's going to be a lot of images. So what I need to do is click on the output file path, navigate to my desktop, and make sure that I'm on my desktop, I create a new folder for my image sequence, call this a PNG sequence or seek, and then make sure that that is both selected and opened, and click save, and now my image sequence is going to go into its own little folder. Now I'm ready to encode, and if you've got a multi-threaded machine, you've got a fairly fast machine, you'll discover that it actually encodes all of these in one go, in series, rather than waiting to finish one and encode another, it'll actually do them all together. So I'm going to click encode, or start queue, and we're going to see them starting down here, and then I'm going to pause the video and come back towards the end. So I'm going to click start queue, and actually, you know what, it's as simple as that. It's going to connect to the dynamic link server, it's going to go and find the project, make sure it can do it properly, and then in a moment or two it will start to encode, and as I say, I will then pause the project, and we can come back to it, and you can actually see there are the four different versions encoding, and we can see up here we've actually got a progress bar for how these different ones are working. So I shall pause it there and come back when it's finished. Now at this point you can see that my movie file formats are coming close to an end, they're going to finish very soon. It's going to take a little bit longer for the image sequence to carry on, but let's just finish these ones. Watch those finish. So that's one finished. There you go, those three are done, now this one will probably go a little bit quicker. I shall uh, pause it again and come back just as this one finishes, we've got another 1 minute 25 to go. Now it's worth saying that this time is not real. You can see it's going far quicker than it actually says in seconds. As I'm talking, the seconds are ticking past much quicker than it actually says. So even though it gives you a figure down here, it isn't actually always accurate. And usually, particularly on my machines, it tends to be a lot quicker. And so the last one's going to be finished. And there, they're all done. So now that's done, let's go to the desktop and have a little look. So let's minimize that and go to the desktop. And here are the movie files. So I can double click one of these to have a little look. There's the movie file with me example of bouncing text playing along full 10 seconds. 
nice high quality which I could upload directly to YouTube or Vimeo depending on which one it was. So it's extremely simple to do as you can see it's a very easy program to use and when it comes to the image sequence here's my ping sequence double click on the ping sequence and you can see there are all the images which I can then import back into After Effects if I like or I can import them into Premiere Pro or any other compositing program to be able to use with an alpha channel over whatever I wish to use it as. So that is the first introduction to the media encoder. In the next tutorial we're going to start looking at our own preset groups and how we can modify things and in the last tutorial we'll have a little look at watch folders. My name's Andrew Davis and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.